Hi, I'm Colt Straub, executive producer of Mountain Monsters, and I'm joined here today with the Ames team guys to get the story behind the hunt. So guys, this time we're dealing with the Kentucky Hellhound. You guys heard reports that this was a ferocious, vicious canine creature uh, that really hit home when you guys met with your first eyewitness, Billy, and you saw what happened to his calf. What did it mean when you guys saw that and what it had done to that calf? Oh, that was totally unbelievable. It looked like the Hellhound had actually chased him down and just ripped huge hide off of his back. Huckleberry and I and most of the guys here have uh, some dealing with cattle over the years. We've never seen anything like that before. I haven't anyway. No, I've never. I talked to a friend in the stockyard and he, he'd actually never heard a farmer even ever talk us about like, something like that. Because you're talking strips of hide being going oh, yeah. that wide, that long, just ripped right off of that. Oh, yeah. After you met with Billy, you guys did your first night investigation back there. And Trapper, you made it very clear to the whole team that was out there with you, Huckleberry, Jeff, and Buck, but you guys can't run from this thing. This is a predator. No matter what happens, you can't run. I can't help, but I couldn't do that. If that thing came after me, uh, I would run. I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you. Why is it so important not to? And then also, how do you guys keep from running from something like this if you have an encounter with it? Well, the first thing is a predator. You have to realize that virtually everything we go after is a predator. It's either a predator towards a deer or it's a predator towards a groundhog, or it's a predator towards a coyote. If you turn and run, he's on you. He's on you. He'll, he'll, it'll, he'll, he'll pounce right on you. It'll instigate the chase in him, and he'll pull you down from behind. 99% of the time, if you stand your ground, I don't even give a damn if it's one of Bill's 500-pound black bears. You can stare him down. It's yes, sir. There. And as far as this team running, we'd harass him for the rest of his life. Yeah. <laughs> my dad told me when I was a kid, he said, son, you're too big to hide and too big to run. Learn to fight. <laughs> the, the, the next day you guys came back, you finished up the trap, and you guys came and saw it for, for the first time. What were you thinking when you guys saw this bamboo trap, and did you think it was strong enough? Buck, you got to test it. What were you guys' thoughts on, on this bamboo trap when you guys first saw it? First seeing it, you knew. Willie, Willie and Bill had been at it again. I mean, you, know, you give Willie a basic idea of, of what you need, and then he gets real creative, real creative. He can take a cigarette lighter and a paper clip and make an atomic bomb out of it. <laughs> yeah, it's like Christmas time when you pull up on them trap sites. You never know what you're going to yeah, get. Exactly. Oh, brother, we'll get her done now. That's our old MacGyver right here. Tell me what happened. What was going through your mind when you guys got in the side by sides, chased it to the cornfield, and then I, uh, Buck, you actually saw the entrance point, and then basically, you know, mayhem took place after that as you guys went out. Tell me what happened in the cornfield. What was that like? That's just about one of the hairiest situations the team's ever been oh, in. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, that was a real concern of mine in that cornfield. And then he had to make those runs on us. Come within, I actually believe I touched him. He'd come that close to you. And all you would hear was that big rush coming, and he was there. He'd be there so fast you couldn't, you wouldn't have time to raise your weapon. By the time you heard it, he was going. Hey, you couldn't hear him coming. He's running down those patches of that corn, and you know. He was just stealth mode. I mean, he was right, right there. You didn't even know how close he was to you. Then if you did have to shoot, you had that in your head, where's the rest of the team at, you know? There's no way we could have shot. There's no way we could, we could have shot. I figured somebody was going to get hurt that night. You guys had some interesting comments about how that corn is being harvested right after. Where do you guys think the hellhound went? Where does he go after this? My standard opinion there was he was going to go back to the high country. Yeah. Uh, that farm ground down in there, the only way he could move undercover was from cornfield to cornfield. Yeah. Never be seen, never hardly heard of or anything. We come so close to them if we don't catch them. We kind of put fear in that creature's heart. A certain amount of fear of humans. If it missed our trap or it got by us, and that'll actually make that creature aware of human beings and how dangerous we are. I believe that creature will move back into big timber where no people are at because we've struck some fear in that creature's heart too. Kill heat on him. Yeah. Join us next time in Behind the Hunt, where we'll be discussing the hunt for the Grafton Monster. And don't forget to watch Mountain Monsters on Friday, 10, 9 central, only on Destination America.